I was born in a village near the Irrawaddy River Delta. I have always had a love for the river, which is the lifeblood of our people. Our culture depends on it. This sense of connection led me to become an environmental journalist. Known as one of the world's most repressive regimes, Myanmar's junta allowed the extraction of natural resources for the benefit of neighboring countries. Then it opened the door to foreign investments, like the Chinese-backed Mieso Dam. This megaproject would destroy forests, farmland, and fishing communities, impacting millions of people. 90% of the electricity generated would go to China. We were sad and angry when we learned that a dam was being built at the crucial headwaters of the Irrawaddy. The dam would flood the cultural heartland of the ethnic Kachin people. In 2009, when the construction of the dam began, thousands of Kachin were moved to resettlement villages, further stoking ethnic tensions. If completed, the dam would displace 18,000 people and affect millions downstream. Media censorship was still quite strict in 2009. So journalists in the environmental movement were all trying to find a way to do something about the dam. I went to Mietson and started taking photographs along the Irrawaddy. To circumvent censorship of stories about dams, Mian Zha wrote about the negative impacts of dams in other countries. But he and his colleagues realized that they needed to go beyond journalism to get their message out. We decided to use art galleries as places to share information. With the support of famous writers, visual artists, and musicians, Mian Zha created a series of art gallery exhibitions to overcome the military government's restrictions on public meetings. Through our photographs and artwork, we wanted audiences to visualize the dam's impact on people's everyday lives. We were nervous during that first exhibit, so we only ran it for half a day. After our guests saw the show and heard our speeches, we quickly packed up and left. To intimidate and suppress us, the intelligence service would try to find out who was organizing these events. Then they'd place us under surveillance. We were distributing scientific data and educational materials without government permits. We were always worried about getting arrested. Despite these challenges, Mi and Zha organized three new shows called The Art of the Watershed. He traveled around the country with the exhibitions and created support for what rapidly became a national movement. We knew we'd reached a tipping point when the entire country started talking about the Mietzon Dam. The exhibit was visited by members of parliament, government officials, and civil society leaders. Nearly 3,000 people attended. It was a message to the president that he must do something. Not long after that, the president announced he would suspend the Mietzon Dam. This was joyous news for everyone. It was a very important turning point for Myanmar, where the people spoke and the government actually listened. It will be remembered in our history as a rare victory for civil society. For outstanding environmental achievement for Asia, the 2015 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Mint Zha, Yangon, Myanmar.